Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for for joining us today uh, to get an update on the California CHIPS criteria and uh, also some interesting uh, information from our guest uh, presenting group, Window Master. <coughs> As we start, we'd just like to uh, give a special thanks to our sponsors, um, SoCal Edison, SMUD, and Pacific Gas and Electric Company. Uh, if you have uh, questions, please uh, submit them through the question box uh, on the controls for the GoToWebinar. Uh, we don't seem to have a raised hand. So we will answer questions at the end. Oh, we do have a raising. Oh, take that back. Um, but we're going to wait until after uh, at least uh, my session of the, the chip section of the presentation. We'll answer a couple of questions then. But we really want to wait till uh, both CHIPS and Window Master have presented, and then we'll get to as many uh, questions as we can on the webinar. And if you type in your questions, we will answer them. Uh, we'll, we'll, we will send responses, even if we don't get to them uh, on the webinar today. So that I am going to start so we have enough time to get the questions in. So today our agenda, there's going to be two components to our presentation. Uh, myself, uh, Dr. Stephanie Mason, uh, Technical Director for CHIPS, is going to give an update on the CHIPS criteria um, as a result of the 2016 California Code update. Um, and then we will transition into a presentation by Yannick Roth of Window Master Control Systems. They're a CHIPS member uh, organization. And they're going to talk about natural, natural ventilation, a window to the future, and discuss uh, interlocks and some other features of the 2016 California Code and some solutions they have. So I um, just want to let everyone know that the up, there's an updated version of the CHIPS criteria on the CHIPS website. Um, I'm going to mention it now and again at the end. Please. Please, if you haven't already, please download this version of the CHIPS criteria so you have access to the updated information. A little bit of background. Um, <clears throat> so our goal for California CHIPS is to be harmonized uh, with Cal Green, uh, Title 24, Part 6, the energy component, as well as Prop 39 educational initiatives and other school bonds such as Prop 51. Um, today we're focusing on the Cal Green and Title 24 Part 6 updates and the revisions that we've made to the CHIPS criteria to account for, for those updates. Um, I will mention as we go through, this is going to be rather dense as far as text on the slides. Um, and I understand, I apologize, but um, I, I designed it so that when you get a copy of the presentation, which you will get at the end, uh, a copy of the slide deck, you will have all this information for reference. So I'm going to start with some highlights of the updates um, for the California codes. And we'll start with the 2016 Title 24 Energy Standard, uh, which I'll refer to as B's. Uh, overall, um, this, the energy requirement is about 7% uh, put in quotes better uh, than the 2013. So um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the ZEPI scale. It's a form of energy utilization index. You'll note that for the same uh, level of achievement beyond code, the, the ZEPI score is lower than it used to be. 
So to achieve the same number of points, you are now more, you will be more energy efficient um, because we've maintained the requirements uh, for energy efficiency and for superior energy efficiency. Um, <clears throat> a couple of notes. Um, we added to the integration category, II 1.0, a the requirement that the at least one of the integrated design meetings meet the requirements of the new section 120.8 D2 requirement for a design review kickoff that's in the commissioning section. So that has been included. Um, the other highlight is the inclusion of section 140.4 N for interlock controls. And these are required when operable wall or roof openings are present. Um, <clears throat> there's not a requirement to have operable windows, for example. However, um, <laughs> operable windows uh, means you can have natural ventilation and take advantage of um, good weather days outside as far as thermal control um, and to be more energy efficient. So Window Master will go into detail on this area and show you some case studies uh, as well to support the use of interlock controls. In Title 24, Part 11, also known as Cal Green, uh, all these changes were effective January 1st, 2017. Um, any project in California that registers now uh, will need to comply with the new updated um, CHIPS criteria, which has the 2016 codes. Uh, if you registered your project uh, prior to January 1st and had DSA approval uh, under the old codes, you will continue to use that um, version of the criteria for your project. Um, <clears throat> some highlights are section 5.304.6, which is outdoor portable water use in landscape areas. Um, this is a result of the water use restrictions uh, that came in in 2015. They've just been included now formally into the the code. Um, another addition is in 5.401.1, uh, organic waste has been included to the material that is required to be recycled. Uh, there is a rural exception and we have included that as well. Uh, a couple of notes, there are a couple of updates that are not applicable to schools. Um, those are some bicycle parking changes, uh, electric vehicle charging spaces, and new submeeting requirements. Uh, these were not adopted by the DSA, which oversees the school buildings. Uh, so they are not a requirement uh, for code or for chips. OK, so this is where we go kind of heavy into the details. Uh, if you have questions, not a problem. And just the bold areas are to highlight uh, the take the takeaways. So we had some updates that were a result of the the codes, um, and one of those was that we removed the reference to Cal Green Section 5.506.2. Um, this is the requirement for CO2 monitoring for demand control ventilation. It was not adopted by DSA. Um, uh, additionally, um, ASHRAE 62.1, which is the, the basis for our HVAC design requirement, um, specifically disavows uh, using CO2 sensors to determine the level of ventilation required. So, in that case, so that is not applicable for schools. Um, you may have seen some Cal Green sections have been moved around. 
Uh, one of those was section 5.501. It was an EQ 1.0, the HVAC design, and has been moved to the construction IAQ management credit, EQ 5.0. Um, and that specifically references indoor and moisture control, uh, Title 24, Part 2, Section 1203, the ventilation. Let's see. <clears throat> uh, note that we still keep a reference to 5.506.1, the outside air deli delivery uh, in EQ 1.0. Uh, we also included the reference to Cal Green Section 5.504.3. This is not necessarily new, but we made sure that it was specifically mentioned in the CHIPS criteria that requires the covering of duct openings and protection of mechanical equipment during construction. Let's see. So those are the big changes. The uh, EQ 7.0, the low emitting materials. Uh, it is there's no change, but the language has been revised so that it matches up with the language in Cal Green, so there's no confusion. Um, <clears throat> and the same thing is true of EQ 14.0, uh, the acoustical performance. Uh, the language was revised for clarification, and we fixed the, the section numbering. We've also made it clear that both the prescriptive method and the performance method, uh, as detailed in Cal Green, are acceptable for the exterior noise transmission requirement. Okay. Um, just some general errata, uh, not necessarily related to the, the code updates. Um, the point allocations have been corrected. Uh, for consistency, and you'll see this, there's also a new <clears throat> scorecard, and there will be a new workbook shortly that has these correct points in it, but this, you have it here for reference. Um, also added some implementation language for the EQ 5.0 mold prevention, and as well as documentation requirements for EQ 5.0 and 5.1. Uh, to, to make it simpler and clear what is needed. Um, <clears throat> finally, we've also clarified that the glare control uh, requirement is only a prerequisite for, reno for modernization projects when the envelope is improved. So if you see other areas where the language is still unclear, um, please let us know because we are trying to, to make the criteria as straightforward as we can. So that's the EQ category. I'm going to stick the energy category right now and save that for the end. Um, there are a few changes in the water category. Um, for the indoor water use, we've updated the, the reference Calgreen sections. They're now 5.303 and 0.3 and 0.6. Uh, one thing to note is that we've added more detail to Table 15, which is the fixture for performance requirements. So it's clear what is what is needed for the different water fixtures. Um, one thing we did do is we removed a prerequisite, the WE 2.0, the sewage conveyance, uh, portable potable water use. Uh, there is no requirement for this in Cal Green. So we've removed the prerequisite and simply made this a, a credit. Um, <clears throat> there are some changes to WE 3.0, uh, 3.1, the irrigation and exterior water use, um, as well as the both the non-recreational water use reduction and recreational water use reduction. Um, criteria. For all of these, we've added reference to the DSA landscape documentation package, um, which was lost. Um, oh, there's, I've put the, uh, the URL for that. To, so to simplify the requirements, it's uh, the same documentation that would be provided to DSA. So we're not asking you to do 
uh, anything uh, additional there. Um, <clears throat> and we've also removed the calculations in the implementation section uh, because they were no longer current. So if you use that DSA landscape documentation package now, uh, you should be all set. Um, <clears throat> one thing to note is that for WE 3.0, um, the Calgreen section 5.304.6, the outdoor portable water use in landscape areas, and this is specifically for schools, it applies to both new and rehabilitated landscapes. Okay. So it's, if you're doing a renovation and re updating your landscape, the, this section may then apply for the 5.304.6 WE 3.0. So just something to be aware of. In the site and material categories, uh, just a few items for the post-construction stormwater management credit, SS 5.1. Uh, we've added a prerequisite, SS 5.0, which references the grading and paving section, 5.106.10. Uh, something else to note is that the, for the cool roof credit, uh, we've changed the SRI for the low slope roof from 78 to 82. Um, <clears throat> that 82 is the requirement for the Cal Green Tier 2 level. Um, we did that because the high slope SRI, the high slope, slope roof SRI was already compliant with Cal Green Tier 2. So now both low slope and high slope roofs, the SRI values match the Cal Green Tier 2 levels. Um, let's see, in the materials, 1.0, uh, 1.1 section on recycling, uh, we've added the reference to Cal Green, which was not there before, for sections 5.410.1 and 5.410.1.2, which is the sample ordinance. Note that 5.410.1.1 does not apply <laughs> for schools. Um, and we've also added the organic waste requirement, uh, not only for new um, construction, uh, but also for additions and modernizations. And we felt that that was important uh, for all buildings, uh, whether they were new or modernizations. A couple of updates uh, that are a result of the update to the national, CHIPS National Core Criteria. Uh, the first one is for MW 7.1, it's merely a title change. Uh, the credit was titled Multi-Attribute Material Selection. It is now titled Environmental Product Declarations because that is what the requirement is. Everything in that uh, credit relates to environmental product declarations. So we updated the title to reflect that. Um, we also made some changes to MW 10.1. The building health product, the building product health related information reporting or product transparency. Um, we changed the credit title uh, and we also updated the content that to allow for additional pathways for compliance beyond the HPD, the health product declaration. Um, as you can see here, uh, this is what it looks like now. There is now reference to cradle to cradle uh, product certification standard at uh, different levels, the C to C material health certificate, declare labels, uh, allowing a manufacturer inventory, and we've listed a number of resources uh, where you can find this information. Uh, one of the resources is the Sustainable Minds Transparency Catalog, um, where CHIPS is working with Sustainable Minds so that you can easily find products that are compliant with the CHIPS requirement uh, in their database. Okay, and so this is uh, my next last slide and then I'm going to hand it over to, to Yannick um, to go into details on uh, interlocks and, and other revisions, updates to Title 24. Um, as we said, as I said earlier, that we updated the, 
the reference uh, for Title 24.6, Part 6 to 2016, and uh, updated the ZEPI numbers uh, to reflect that. Uh, we've also renamed EE 2.0 uh, to Solar Ready so that it's clear that it aligns with the California Energy Code, uh, Section 110.10. Um, we've also included the code compliance language in the documentation requirements uh, for better guidance and clarity. Um, for EE uh, 2.1, the zero net energy bonus, um, we've clarified the credit to, to show that it is the source energy that is the metric for ZNE. Uh, previously, where the word required is, we had the word preferred, and it's not preferred, it is required. So we're, we decided to be very clear with that. So it's, it's straightforward. So it's source energy is what we're looking, what we're looking at there. Um, for EE 3.0, the commissioning, um, the Cal Green sections on commissioning, sections 5.410.2 and 5. 0.410.4, they were not adopted by the DSA, so we removed them from the section. However, there's still a requirement to comply with the Title 24, Part 6, Section uh, 201.8, and uh, the Title 24, Part 1, Chapter 10, the acceptance testing. So that's still there. Um, <clears throat> for the Energy Management System, EE 5.0, we've just updated the Title 24 reference sections. And then finally, for EE 6.2, the interlock controls. Um, EE 6.2, the interlock controls used to be combined with uh, the operable, uh, not with, it, with thermostat controls, and we've moved it, put it, made it its own credit. It is now EE 9.0, and this is to reflect the new Title 24 requirement. Um, We've revised the language to align with the California Energy Code and reflect the intent of the credit. And that is to specify and install interlock switches on all manually operated windows, skylights, and doors. And this is when the building has mechanical ventilation. Uh, note that the operable, operable windows are not a requirement. However, I'm going to <laughs> pass the, the presentation over to Yannick to discuss why, while operable windows are not a requirement, there are a lot of benefits and there are ways to um, <clears throat> comply with Title 24 um, in a way that is cost effective and is also beneficial to the occupants. So I have one last slide, which is just a reminder to download the updated 2014 CalCHIPS criteria. Um, let's see, I put the URL there. If you have any questions on that, um, please uh, let us know. All right, Yannick, I am going to make you the present presenter now. I hope I picked the right one. Thank you, and uh, hopefully everyone can see my screen uh, now. I just have to do like this. Okay. Thank you, uh, Tips, for first of all for inviting uh, us uh, here today, and also for setting up this webinar. Uh, I'm here a little bit to speak about, uh, of course, the new uh, Type 24 uh, requirements regarding the insular. But uh, first, I just want to give you a brief introduction to who I am, so you know a little bit about my background, of, of, of course. Uh, I work uh, at Windowmaster, and I've been working uh, at Windowmaster since uh, 2009. And I work uh, in, in an institute, uh, what we call Ventilation Institute, and uh, you can say our main focus is, is actually to design the ventilation system. So that can, for instance, be the natural ventilation system or a hybrid ventilation system in a building. And we do that throughout a dynamic simulation or CFD, model, CFD modeling and energy calculations. 
And besides this, we also do a lot of lobbying. Uh, this is just some of the activities we, we have at the moment. Of course, we do a lot of uh, lobbying in the Europe, European norms, um, because we are also located in Europe. Uh, but besides this, of course, we also <clears throat> do uh, a member or do uh, some lobbying regarding the ASRAE 62.1, where we are actually in the working group uh, with regard to the natural ventilation procedure. And we will uh, are currently tr trying to update the natural ventilation procedure because at the moment it's, it's perhaps one or two pages. It's not so uh, condensed, but we will try to make it even more, uh, you can say, valuable for, for, our, uh, for, the, for the client to use as well. And then we also uh, involved in a lot of research projects and do a lot of conference and seminars and webinars like this. So there was just a very brief introduction. So uh, the agenda of today's presentation is I will tell you very, very short about Window Master and what we do. Uh, otherwise, you can go in and uh, log on our homepage and see what we do if you want to have additional information. And then I will, would like to give you some um, slides about what the benefits are of natural or hybrid ventilation uh, for a building. And then, of course, I would like to touch about the new requirements for the interlock for the Type 24. And then uh, last, I want to give you some uh, uh, five case studies we have uh, we have in, in the U.S. as well. But yeah, we're shortly about uh, Window, Ma Window Master. So we are established in 1990. Our headquarters is uh, in in Denmark, in Copenhagen, and we of course have uh, sales offices in uh, other countries as well. Of course, we have a sales office in uh, in the U.S. Uh, in San Francisco. And we have uh, around 150 employees uh, in these uh, six countries. But besides this, we also have what we call certified partners uh, around the world, which also sell our component and uh, our products as well. And uh, last but not least, we have around 700 projects uh, around the world. And some of these I want to give you some example uh, of uh, today. Of course, our main or core business areas is, of course, natural ventilation and uh, mixed mode ventilation. So the mixed mode ventilation is also what we call hybrid ventilation. So that's where we combine natural ventilation and a mechanical ventilation system. Uh, besides this, we also, of course, uh, uh, manufacture our own actuators. And these can, of course, be uh, uh, mounted to a, a window profile. And then we can open and close these windows according to the weather and then use these windows for natural ventilation. And we also have our, you can say, our own uh, control uh, uh, system, where we, for instance, can control, of course, the natural ventilation. We can also control a mechanical ventilation, heating and lighting in a space, but also the solar shading. So you can say we can control more or less thing in, in a building. And besides this, uh, that is just to give a very brief introduction. So we are, of course, uh, uh, focusing on, on you can say, on a whole building life cycle. So we are, in, of course, in the design phase. We are providing the solutions. We can implement the solution. And we also do the follow-up and services uh, for, for a building. So a very, very short introduction to when I say natural ventilation, I mean uh, controlled natural ventilation. Uh, um, so I don't mean, for instance, natural ventilation by a, a manual uh, openable windows. So when I say natural ventilation, I mean uh, where we can control, for instance, uh, the, the opening distance of a window based on, for instance, indoor temperature, uh, CO2 level, relative humidity, but also the external conditions like air temperature, wind speed and direction and rain and etc. So yeah, this is just to give you a, a brief introduction to that, to this. And of course, <clears throat> uh, natural ventilation can be many things. It can be many different kind of openings. Uh, it can be facade openings. It can be roof openings. And then, yeah, of course, there's a uh, very, very large uh, difference in how you can use them and how uh, you can, uh, for instance, like, like this one, you can service mount an actuator and open this window, but you can also integrate the actuator inside a window, so it's almost, uh, also it's actually invisible. Uh, yeah. And last but not least, this is my last slide uh, for, for this part at least. Um, when Actually, when we talk about natural insulation, uh, we talk about uh, a system that needs to be designed and but also engineered uh, and of course controlled because we have seen many projects or many at least 
where actually they want to use natural ventilation, but it has not been designed correctly or it has not been actually controlled correctly. And th this means, uh, unfortunately, that the building is not running uh, as smooth as, 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 yeah, as it could be. So, second one is uh, actually what is the benefit of natural and hybrid uh, system. Of course, there's a lot of uh, benefits. It goes from, uh, yeah, you can see from from energy savings, we can see that a lot of uh, different study has proven that there are a lot of energy that can be saved if we use uh, natural uh, ventilation systems. You can also have a healthier uh, environment, uh, reduce, for instance, absent, uh, the, the, the sick leaves uh, for the employees or for actually for your children as well. But also we can also see that you can, can actually perform better. Uh, so, so this is in a, a school. Uh, so you can say that you can actually improve uh, your test score uh, for a school. Children with uh, seven to eight percentages in a classroom with upper bowl window compared to a, a, a classroom with fixed windows. And of course, last but not least, you can also reduce uh, the cost, uh, for instance, on your mechanical ventilation system. Uh, yeah. Furthermore, I just want to give you some brief uh, 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 you can say introduction to some of the studies that has been done uh, uh, in the past. So here actually we have uh, Dr. Uh, Harl Meyer who have conducted uh, a survey in a, in a number of, of schools um, and here they actually, uh, he actually looked at the uh, schools where there was used natural ventilation compared with schools that, that was using a mechanical ventilation. And he looked at different uh, symptoms, for instance, a uh, headache, uh, that's a typical uh, one. So <clears throat> actually the, the green bar here shows the, the prevalence of, uh, uh, you can say, uh, symptoms, uh, symptoms recorded. Okay, it says my slide does not change at all. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, let me just see if I can do something about this. Let me see here. Can you can you see my slides now? I just have someone. That's perfect. That was a yes. I think that was perhaps something with the connection. Um, okay, so. I was just, I was here. Okay, so this was actually a study conducted by Dr. Harl Meyer, where he actually um, uh, could see uh, the difference between a natural and mechanical ventilation buildings with regards to the headache. So the green bar here shows the prevalence of uh, symptoms uh, for headache. So it was around 25% for the mechanical ventilation and around 12% for the natural ventilation uh, classrooms. Uh, and this is actually showing uh, the same picture of all the different kind of symptoms that, are, that has been reported higher uh, symptoms with the mechanical ventilation buildings compared to the uh, natural ventilated buildings. Furthermore, there's also something with the productivity gains. So here, that's that is actually different studies that has been conducted uh, throughout the last uh, 35 years, uh, six studies here. And they actually <clears throat> have looked at uh, the pro productivity gains from uh, hybrid and natural ventilation. So you can see here is actually the productivity gains you can have when you use a natural or a hybrid ventilation system. So you can see it actually, the different studies actually varies from around 3% uh, productivity gains up to around 8% productivity gains when you use a natural or hybrid ventilation system. Of course, uh, I've written the source out here, so if you want to read more, you can uh, yeah, go and look at, at this. Uh, I think this is the last slide. Uh, is something uh, to do with how um, occupants, uh, how they percept their control uh, opportunities in a, a natural ventilated building compared to a mechanical ventilated building. So, of course, in a, uh, uh, many people in a mechanical ventilated building has reported that they actually feel that they have no control uh, at all. Uh, around 50% uh, of the occupants have uh, stated that they actually feel that they have no control uh, of, the, of, the, of the system. Uh, whereas you can see here, uh, around 30% uh, of, um, of the occupant in, a, in the natural ventilated building has stated that they have a high degree of control. 
yeah, I can, I will leave this one out. You can read it afterwards. So now we want to go actually to the new Title 24 uh, requirements. We got the, the interlock. So um, as you also saw early on, there is some actual, uh, some new requirements for manual uh, uh, wall or roof openings. So here you see this requirement and here it says how to com comply with these requirements and here's a nice sketch of, of that. So actually, uh, if you have um, manual openable uh, windows uh, you know, in the roof or in the wall, uh, to the outside, it's, it shall have interlock. And that is, of course, if uh, the space is uh, mechanical, heated or cooled. And if the space has, a, for instance, a, a temperature sensor in the room. And last but not least, if the openings are open for more than five minutes, then you should uh, uh, have this interlock uh, on, on the window. And you can say, firstly, how to comply with this. Of course, when the building is in, in for instance, heating mode, um, you can say, if a window is open for more than five minutes, then uh, either what you should do is I either uh, disable or uh, the, mecha the mechanical heating or reset uh, the temperature set point to 55 Fahrenheit. If the building is in mechanical cooling mode, then yeah, you can disable the mechanical cooling, but you can also again reset the temperature set point to 90 Fahrenheit. Uh, this and this is actually one way to comply with the, with this. Of course, interlock can be many things. Of course, it can be yeah, for instance, a sensor like this that can sense how uh, or if the window is opened manually, but also it can also be uh, motorized. And I will get back to that a little bit later. But Last but not least, these uh, sensors need to be linked to the BMS system and, uh, of course, give uh, the BMS system uh, the feedback that uh, this particular window has been opened. And here are some more examples. Um, uh, just a second. Okay, so here is uh, some more examples. So, of course, when we, we talk about uh, manual uh, openings uh, to the outdoor, uh, it can, of course, be windows or skylights, uh, uh, and, of course, doors uh, here in this example. Um, <clears throat> but it can also be a motorized uh, windows, of course, and uh, they are still considered these motorized uh, windows, they're still considered as um, being manual operable uh, windows if occupant can open uh, the opening as desired and of course and they will stay open uh, uh, until um, the occupier manual close the window again. So and, and in this case if you have a motorized window and uh, the occupier chooses to open the window fully and then the system will not take over again then of course you also will have to comply with with these requirements. So, of course, how you can re uh, comply uh, is, of course, you can say that the system will take uh, back the control uh, in after a period of time. So, if uh, the occupier chooses to open a window which is motorized, then, of course, after, for instance, 20 minutes, the system will take control again, and then you will re uh, comply with the, with the requirements. Yeah, another example here um, is, of course, if uh, if the inside temperature, if you are in, in, in cooling mode, if the inside temperature is uh, uh, 75 Fahrenheit and the outside, as we said, outside temperature is uh, 70 Fahrenheit, then, of course, uh, you do not have to, um, you can say, shut down uh, your cooling uh, because then, of course, you will bring in cooler air uh, into the space. Uh, the last one I have here is, of course, <clears throat> Uh, many rooms are perhaps divided in several zones. Uh, for instance, if you have a, a perimeter zone here, an interior zone here, then of course you, you can uh, say that in, in this, for this case, it would only be uh, the zone one which has to comply with the interlock uh, to the windows, um, <clears throat> and zone two uh, would not have to uh, comply with that because that is not uh, linked to these uh, facade windows, for instance. 
and of course there are now quite a few examples uh, or more examples uh, in the in the compi compliance manual uh, for the non-residential uh, which of course you are welcome to to look uh, more into yeah. and then last i have some cases i want to show of course uh, we have yeah, quite a few cases 700 projects around the world so of course one of them is uh, the bullet center in the US but we also have uh, dwellings we have PNC town in Pittsburgh a lot of uh, big office building and uh, shopping centers but also uh, hotels facilities and, and other uh, kind of buildings so natural or hybrid ventilation can be used in, in many different kind of buildings and uh, environment as well the first um, study or the first case I want to show you is uh, actually a relatively new one is from Harvard University and, and this is actually a, a building which is going to be built very soon and it's uh, the Harvard Center for Green Buildings and Cities who are going to, to live in this one. And this building is actually 100% um, uh, uh, using the natural ventilation so there are no mechanical ventilation in, in this uh, building. So here, actually, you can see here on, on the on the lower picture here, we have our upper bowl window, which is uh, which is controlled, and below here we have manual windows. And of course, the the this uh, high level window here. On this, we have of course a motorized uh, system, and on the other one, on the lower level window here, we have a, you can say a sensor which sends if the if the if the window is opened. Yeah, just if you want to have more detail on, on this building, you can try to Google it, and then you can see actually uh, what the intention is behind this building. But I can just briefly say that uh, everything is natural ventilation, and they also we have also made this uh, solar chimney because there is a basement here, a high basement where we have uh, facade windows, uh, but it's a meeting room, and, and then we have uh, uh, made this uh, solar chimney, which actually can, and uh, you can see. Uh, increase the benefits of the of the natural ventilation and also extend the season of how much we can use the natural ventilation uh, for that space. Yeah, but again, we have um, actuators, motorized uh, windows uh, on our on our windows, and we have uh, our own system. And uh, of course, besides the motorized and the natural ventilation, we also control the heating and cooling uh, for this uh, building, but also also the solar shading and, and for that we also of course make uh, some control strategies so for instance when we open the window to a certain extent we will of course do uh, do the interlink uh, or interconnect with the heating and cooling system as well the next one I want to show you is the yeah, University of Baltimore School and Law so actually they have found out that they can use natural ventilation for around 40% of the time and here, uh, you, yeah, just going very brief to it, uh, they have facade windows and they have a large big atrium in the middle, which they actually use as a stack effect uh, for this building. And of course, uh, the windows will automatically close. Um, okay, the slide does not change again. We will just try something like this. Sorry that if there's a, a little bit of a bug inside the system. Um, hopefully you can see my my slide now. I try to... Uh, yes, sorry for that. Uh, um, okay, so actually what, what they have um, done here is actually um, uh, <clears throat> uh, that the, the windows will be automatically closed when the air conditioning is on, of course, and that would also, of course, save a lot of energy. Uh, to to that building, so that's of, is of course one way also to comply with these uh, requirements. Another building is here is the, the Crowell uh, Campus in San Diego, and uh, they also have uh, overall windows. And actually, they say of course that uh, all employees have access to the to overall window. Uh, okay, sorry, it's just a little bit of. Uh, Yes, I will try once again here. So actually, everyone has, uh, everyone, uh, every employee has access to the upper windows here. And uh, again, uh, the mechanical ventilation system is actually shut down when the windows is open. And of course, the heat pump is also shut down uh, when windows uh, remain open. And that, of course, also ensure that there is a, a very 
that no energy is wasted uh, in, in that particular building. Uh, last but not least uh, here um, is actually uh, the University of San Francisco uh, Center uh, and they also use uh, natural ventilation or a mixed mode ventilation system where they actually uh, choose between using uh, the natural ventilation system or mechanical ventilation system. Uh, so say because also in here in the slab they have uh, embedded uh, pipes which actually run either, either uh, hot water or cool water and of course when it's very hot and humid outside and if we tend to open this window you will have uh, you can say condensation uh, on these uh, um, uh, <clears throat> on these uh, concrete uh, elements here so of course uh, we want to have the windows closed when it's very hot and humid outside and then the mechanical ventilation would take over, but of course we can still uh, use, uh, for instance, nighttime purging, uh, etc. This one you can read afterwards. So thank you for your participation, and then I think we will go to the Q and A session now. And uh, sorry for for if there was a little bit of a, a bug inside the system and you did not see my my slide uh, quite uh, as good. Uh, but yeah, you will have the uh, presentation sent to you afterwards. So I think we will try to open for the Q&A session and then see how that's going. Yeah, so if anybody has any questions they haven't already typed in, please go ahead and do so. Um, <clears throat> someone did note that um, there was a typo on the slide uh, where we're talking about the commissioning, uh, the EQ, I'm sorry, the EE 3.0, uh, rather than section 201.8, it should be 120.8, and we will go ahead and correct that in the slides uh, before they're sent out. Um, let's see, there's a, a question, and it looks like this is for um, for you, Yannick, uh, are the window controls easily integrated with a BMS on a BACnet communication protocol? Yeah, so actually we have, uh, you can say, multiple, uh, you can say multiple uh, things we can do. We can either do it with the, the BACnet control uh, system. We can also do it with some other protocols called KNX or LON Modbus. So actually there are different uh, protocols that can be used uh, yeah, from our perspective. So it, yeah, so we, we do either the BACnet or we can also do the KNX, LON or Modbus uh, situation. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, let's see. Don't, doesn't look like we have any other questions. Um, that's okay. Uh, if you have questions later, uh, please let us know and we'll answer them. Oh, here we go. Um, is there any modeling done on the interior microbiome? That's for you, Yannick. Okay, I just have to figure out the, the, the term microbiome. So, okay. uh, yeah. so of course, well, yeah, when, <clears throat> of course, what, what we, yeah, if you will just perhaps put some other wording to that, but uh, I can talk a little bit in between. Of course, what we always it's do in... bacterial count inside the building. Sorry? The microbiome is the bacterial count inside the building. Oh, inside the building, okay. Uh, I don't think we have counted the bacteria inside a building um, like that, but of course, as always, you need to be aware of if there's anything, and that's also, of course, why I showed you the, the one of the case studies where we have an embedded pipe system in the concrete for cooling, for instance. And then, of course, if it's very hot and humid outside and we open the windows, then, of course, you will have condensation, uh, you can say, very fast uh, inside a building. You will get what we call rain inside a building. So, of course, and, and this will, of course, lead to bacteria, uh, yes. Um, but besides that, of course, natural ventilation should be used, of course, when uh, when you have a, a good outdoor climate as well, uh, and, and used in, in, you can say, in, 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 yeah, in this range. Uh, of course, if there are some problems with the outside, of course, you should perhaps limit the openings to a certain uh, amount of the time, 
or so on, or for instance, do the, the nighttime cooling. Um, but otherwise, no, we haven't done any, you can say, uh, microbiologic things. But I, I think also some of the study actually support us a little bit when we try to compare with the uh, with mechanical ventilation system and, and natural. Uh, when we try com to compare these two, we can actually see that uh, it's actually more symptoms in the mechanical ventilated buildings compared to when we have the, the natural ventilated uh, buildings. Yeah, so I think that would be my, my answer for now. Well, thank you, uh, Yannick and Window Master, um, for presenting with us today. Um, <clears throat> hopefully everyone on the call is a little more knowledgeable about the, the updated California CHIPS criteria and some solutions that are available out there for natural ventilation and for interlock controls. Uh, we thank you all for attending. Um, <clears throat> you'll be receiving a, a follow-up uh, email uh, in a few days, which will have the, the slide decks. And um, if you have any other questions, uh, please let us know, and we will get back to you as soon as we can with those. So thank you all for attending, and have a wonderful afternoon. Yes, thank you.